Well, thanks so much, Susan. Uh, what a great introduction. I appreciate that very much. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm always wary of a good introduction in terms of raising expectations, but thank you. And we'll certainly try to do so with this, uh, with this course. So the course is Science in the Movies. And this is actually a course that I've taught on campus in various different forms over the last 20 or 25 years. I've taught it to freshmen and even as seminars to, uh, to others. Uh, the, let me just kind of give you the two basic premises of why I teach this course and what the idea is. The first is that movies are really a great influence of both our hopes and our fears about what science is going to do to us or what it's going to bring to us. Um, you know, we see this going, going way back with the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and with, of course, the Frankenstein movies that, that have been remade 800 times. Uh, and so, you know, I think this is a really kind of an important way of looking, especially when we think about controversies around science today, is what these movies do in terms of influencing. The second big topic is this issue of forbidden knowledge. The idea that there are certain things that we really shouldn't even be thinking about, we shouldn't even be looking to. Now, theologians have decided, yeah, very definitely there is forbidden knowledge, Philosophers have pretty much decided, no, there's not forbidden knowledge. Everything should be open. Uh, scientists have been a little ambiguous about this, especially about the consequences of what they're doing. So uh, I think these two themes are going to be very, very important uh, throughout. Uh, there's also a third theme that's going to run through, and that is that, you know, what are the, some of the conflicts that modern scientists face? Uh, whether it be about funding of unpopular research. Uh, when Gabor talks about uh, science fiction and you think of the SETI project, which is, is based right at Berkeley, uh, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, you know, what about who gets credit for discoveries? What about the role of tyrannical heads of labs or major professors? And of course, all this is, is shown very well in the movie Contact, which is one of the ones that we'll be discussing uh, quite a bit. Uh, we're, but there's a variety of other topics we're going to be look, looking at. We're going to look at the overlay of racism on sexism uh, when we talk about hidden figures, for example. We'll be looking at, uh, at uh, the questions surrounding genetic engineering, uh, initially looking at, uh, at the race for the double helix, the Watson and Crick story, uh, followed, of course, by Gattaca. Uh, with our artificial intelligence, we'll look at transcendence and the movie AI artificial intelligence. And uh, by the way, they, they repeated Originally, they wanted to call it AI, but they repeated artificial intelligence because they thought that would, people would confuse it with the steak sauce, A1, if they saw that, uh, that in the title. Uh, but re really, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to do space ex exploration. We'll do pandemics, uh, looking at can, ca contagion. That's a very, very popular movie and very, very timely right now. Uh, and really a variety of things related to space exploration as well. Now, we're not going to skip away from controversial topics, which have been very, very, uh, 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 they, they've been put in an opposition to the, to the general scientific thinking. For example, in the, uh, the anti-vaccination movie, Vaxxed, uh, the uh, issues around creationism, which we, we see in a movie about Charles Darwin's life and his doubts about uh, his theory in the sense of what he knew what the, the consequences of it would be. Uh, and also climate change. You know, we see uh, the, day, the Day After Tomorrow, a movie which handles climate change very, very poorly in terms of the science, but because it was so popular and got people talking about climate change, Noah actually started supporting the movie and talking about getting people to watch it. So there's going to be a lot of things like that we'll talk about in terms of, of the, the, both the social and the scientific and the cultural aspects of these. We're going to go a little further than that. For example, when I, I talked about the overlay of racism on sexism that we see in movies, uh, we'll also talk about you know, why, why are we different skin colors? You know, why, why, how does skin color evolve, which is such a, a, a key issue in the movie Hidden Figure. Um, we'll look at, uh, for example, in dystopian movies, everything from Soil and Green to The Handmaiden's Tale, issues about underpopulation versus overpopulation. And what's the reality of those in terms of the present world we live in? Uh, and then also we'll look at, uh, you know, at issues surrounding resource availability and resource use that triggers a lot of those dystopian movies. So for example, you can even look at, at old cowboy westerns and the biggest resource issue and one of the major topics for the conflicts were, was water. 
just as we see in science fiction dystopic movies. So I think these are a lot of things that we're going to talk about. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll use PowerPoints. I'll po post the PowerPoints each week. I've already put the beginning of a, of a reading list about movies about science that's, uh, that's, that will be on the, uh, the website with the syllabus. And, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, we're going to do talk about a lot of interesting movies. The, the talk, as I said, will be beyond just the movies themselves. We're not just going to review plot lines, but really we'll be talking about some of the implications of a lot of these, these ideas. Now, I know in kind of a disclaimer right from the beginning, I know we're not going to be talking about everybody's favorite movie. And, uh, you know, I'll welcome discussions and the chat about that, uh, you know, after each class. And I promise to get back on, on emails of what we don't cover. But uh, I'll also be covering movies that are familiar to you, like perhaps Contact or, or AI, Artificial Intelligence. But we're also going to be talking about movies that are probably not typical. So, for example, movies that take place in nature. Um, uh, Never Cry Wolf, a fabulous movie about, uh, about trying to study wolves in nature. And of course, there's that contrast that with Jaws and Gorillas in the Mist. So I'm looking forward to doing this. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, um, I hope that uh, this is of interest to you and uh, Susan and the audience, thank you very much.